and welcome back to a new video here in our web gpu triangle video series so we are on video six now you can always find a link to the code of this entire series in the description of this video well we've talked about our shaders we've talked about our vertices we've talked about pieces of a rendering pipeline and today we're going to be taking a look at the code to configure our web gpu rendering pipeline so before moving on i think it begs the question what exactly is a rendering pipeline and what i've done is that i've created this image giving a high level overview of what the rendering pipeline is so we can imagine high level a rendering pipeline is a pipeline where it takes in data and outputs an image so the one thing i really like about this image is that we're already familiar with a couple of these concepts we've already talked about them at length so for example at step number one here we see input and the input are our vertices that we pass to the gpu we then have our vertex shader and that's where we define the position of these vertices as you can see it's starting to take the shape of a triangle because that's where the vertices are positioned in 3d space we then have primitive assembly as the name suggests we're starting to assemble our primitives we're starting to actually take our points in 3d space and we're creating a triangle next there's a process here called rasterization and this one may seem a little bit tricky but you can imagine that our GPU is determining what fragments, or in our case, maybe we can just say pixels, are covering the triangle. And this is important for the next step because when we run our fragment shader, we need to know what pixels we are coloring in. And we wouldn't be able to do that without the rasterization step before that. Finally, we take all of our pixel data, all of our fragment data, the colors that we just generated, and we render that onto our screen. Again, this was a super high level overview of the rendering pipeline. I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but the one thing that I do want to point out is that there are two types of stages of the rendering pipeline, and I've colored in the green ones here to signify that these are completely configurable by us the developer so we've already have written our shader code for the vertex and fragment shaders however there are other steps here that are not so programmable and those are considered fixed so for example primitive assembly we can maybe give hints when we configure our rendering pipeline as we'll see about how we want things to be done but we aren't explicitly writing code for how primitive assembly should work for how rasterization should work. These are things that we abstract to the web GPU API, to our GPU, and that's a good thing because very smart people did some very smart things to make our lives much easier. Before moving on, I've written a little guide on what exactly a rendering pipeline is. It's pretty neat. It goes over what the input of a rendering pipeline is, the different types of shaders, and the different transformations that a vertex position will take as it moves down the rendering pipeline. We also talk about the assembly and the rasterization of primitives, uh, the fragment shader, and how all these pieces come together to form a rendering pipeline to render a web GPU triangle. So with that said, let's now take a look at our code. And as you can see here, what we're doing is we're using our device, which we've already defined and we've already talked about in previous videos. And we're using a method on it called create render pipeline. So for the rest of this video, I'd like to go through each field in this object and better understand what exactly is going on. So we start here with layout. Essentially what this field is doing is that it's helping us configure our render pipeline with a default configuration. We use auto here to say, hey, use that default configuration. For our project, we're just rendering a triangle. So auto here is a perfect solution. However, the WebGPU docs mentions that if you need to use a custom configuration, auto is not for you. So just a quick heads up on that. So for me, things get interesting when we 
consider our vertex field here. What we're doing is we're essentially using all the bits and the pieces that we've defined before, and we're finally putting all of these things together to build our rendering pipeline. So for example, we have this field module, and we're passing in a variable called shader module. And if you've been following my videos up to this point, we can actually scroll up and see that this variable shader module right here is, well, our code for our shaders. So now this all makes sense. If we go back down here, we see an entry point of vertex main. And that makes sense because it is the same name as our vertex shaders function name. Moving on, we see buffers, and that is our vertex buffers descriptors variable. And we've, again, have already defined this. If we scroll up, we see here that we have our vertex buffers descriptors. And if you recall, what we're doing in this is that we're describing the data within our vertex buffer. So first, we have position data, and then we have color data for each vertex in our triangle. And you're probably wondering, where is this defined? Well, if we scroll up, we've already defined this vertices buffer right here. You can see we have four values, and that corresponds to the position of each vertex. And the next four values will be the color. So if we go through each triangle, and we've already talked about this, we have our position, which corresponds to the bottom left of the triangle, and we have these four color values, which signifies red, and we can do this for each line. So now we arrive back to our pipeline object, and that's pretty much all we need to know about for vertex. The next field is fragment, and as you can imagine, it has to do with our fragment stuff. So again, we have our shader module, as we have already defined before, in our vertex object with the shader module, the same thing happens here. And we have fragment main as our entry point. And that makes sense because if we scroll up, we can see that the function name of our fragment shader is fragment main. We then have our targets. And this can be a little bit confusing, but the idea is that, well, we have our fragment shader and what that's doing is that it's rendering to a target image. And for our triangle, our target image is our canvas. So within this object here in targets, we have a field called format and we're passing in presentation format. And this is probably from the first video, but if we scroll all the way up to the top, we can see that we have this variable here, presentation format, and we have our navigator object here, which we access a GPU property, and we're able to call this get preferred canvas format in order to determine what is, as the name suggests, the preferred canvas format on our system. We also pass this into our canvas context when we configure it. So now this is starting to make sense. We're basically saying, hey, the output of our rendering pipeline should be using this format. And that makes sense because it is the same format that we use to configure our canvas context. So that just about sums up fragment. And now the last thing that I want to talk about is primitive. And what exactly is this primitive field? Well, high level, the primitive field is basically defining what primitives we want to render with our vertices. So we have this topology field here, and we're saying create a triangle list, which makes sense because, well, we are rendering a triangle. But I imagine that triangle list will work for many applications if you want your vertices to, well, render triangles. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to start the process of taking this rendering pipeline and, well, rendering to our screen.